Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Sorry if it is a little bit echoey in here today. I am currently redoing my office so it's pretty bare in here but I'm sharing all of that process over on Instagram. If you guys want to follow along you can follow me at It's Noelle Tate and I'm sharing everything that I'm doing in here. So hopefully I'll have this room done in the next couple weeks so I can film a total video for you guys for this channel. But today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys some DIY plant pots. So my husband and I have been feeling very motivated to spruce up the outside of our house. So I wanted to do something cute for our little front porch area. It's small, so I wanted it to just really reflect the inside of our house. So I had these leftover pots from a previous DIY project that I wanted to give a more high-end look to and just really spruce up. And I'm gonna be using two different methods. So I'll share with you guys which one is my favorite and you can choose which one you think would work best for the look that you're going for. So let's go ahead and get into it. So here's what we are starting out with. I use these for my paper mache vase DIY and thought that they had a really great shape but wanted to give them a more textured look similar to this face and just really give it a nicer finish. So the first thing that I should have done was apply this primer to the pots but I completely forgot. So if you are gonna do this DIY project on plastic pots, you definitely do not want to miss this step. So to add some texture to the pot, I'm going to be using this Plaster of Paris and you wanna work in small batches because this dries really quickly. So I'm mixing up one and a half cups of plaster with half a cup of water. And you could add more water if you want more of a subtle texture, but it's just up to you, depending on the look that you wanna go for. So I added a little bit more of plaster so that it would thicken up some more and give it a more textured look. Next, I'm just applying the plaster to the pot with a plastic putty knife, and I'm going from side to side all around the pot. And I wanted the bottom seam of this to blend in a little bit more, so I made sure to smooth that over with the plaster as well. And these pots do have this little lip on the top, so I wanted to hide that. So I'm scraping the plaster up underneath of the lip to fill it in. And then holding the putty knife at an angle to smooth out the plaster so that it blends in seamlessly with the pot. And then I added a little bit more plaster around this part just to help it blend in a little bit better. This plaster dries down really quickly, like I said, so I didn't have to wait very long before it was time to start mixing up the paints. And I wanted a really nice creamy beige color, so I'm just using these paint samples that I had on hand. I didn't want brush strokes, so I'm using this foam brush to paint it on. And then on the little spots that are more textured, I'm just dabbing it in and almost like pressing it into the texture on the pot. I'm also painting the inside of the pot just around the top part that you'll be able to see whenever the plant is in the pot just so that it blends in a little bit more with the rest of the pot. So while that one dries, I'm gonna do this next pot and I wanted to try joint compound to see if it would give me a different look. So I'm just applying it in the same way that I did the plaster. And I will say that this is a lot easier to work with and gives a lot more subtle texture to the pot. 
Since joint compound cracks when it's applied too thick, I decided to use some caulk to help and hide the lip on the pot. So I'm just filling in the lip all around the pot. And then smoothing it out and removing the excess with my finger at an angle. And then I let this dry overnight to make sure that the caulk and the joint compound were both completely dry and then started painting it on the next day. As I started to paint, I noticed that the joint compound was starting to flake off of the pot with the foam brush. So I decided to switch to a bristle brush and that helped. It still tried to flake a little bit. And I don't know if it would have done this if I would have primed the pot or not, but it wasn't a huge problem since I could just paint over the flakes that came off. To seal the pots, I used this clear matte spray paint and made sure to give them really good coverage. And that finished off these textured planners. Okay guys, so it has actually been a couple days since I've had the planters outside and I'm actually having to refilm this outro video because in the last one I said that the joint compound method was my favorite because it was a lot easier to work with, but since the pots have been outside the last couple days, the joint compound pot has actually started to crack like the joint compound on it has started to crack. So I actually think I'm gonna have to completely redo that pot. And I would definitely recommend the plaster and just using a more liquidy version of the plaster. So just don't make it so thick and that should really solve the issue. So just wanted to be open and honest with you guys because I want these projects to be things that you can implement in your own home and that will last and not just fall apart after a couple days. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So if you liked this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. I make new videos like this every single week on home decor, DIY home decor, and making your home look high end on a budget. So if you like that, definitely consider subscribing to my channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos like a patio makeover that I'm currently working on. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.